Hi, this is Adi Burris here for CG Masters, and today we'll be taking a look at creating some quick and easy ornamental details. So first up, let's dive into modeling something to put our ornamental details on suit. So I'm going to start with this default cube, but I don't really want all these vertices, so I'm just going to tab into edit mode and then merge them all into the center with Alt M. And then I'm going to press 3 on the numpad to switch over to our right orthographic mode. And then let's load in our background image that I've already got set up here. I'm just going to enable its visibility. You could just load any image in here really and I've just changed its position and rotation and size just to line it up so that it's useful to use as a kind of silhouette reference although you can tell with this kind of perspective that was in the shot there it's not going to work that great in an orthographic view but still we can use it roughly and I've got this vertex in the center there and I'm going to press E to extrude it out and then we can do one of two things we can use middle mouse to gesture along the Y axis and then that'll lock it into position or you could just hit Y on the uh, keyboard and then I'm going to left click to drop that into position this 3D manipulator that's going to be getting in the way so I'm going to uh, disable that which you can do by clicking on that icon there or use the shortcut key control space and then instead of using E to extrude another thing that we could do is control left click a vertex into place and then that will automatically extrude out the edge and we've got that vertex now highlighted as well so we can now control left click and keep on doing that just to drop vertices and extrude out edges where we want them and then let's just leave it at that for a minute so we can see what we've got so far basically that <laughs> um, so let's go over to the modifiers and then add a modifier and then a screw modifier and then that's basically the sort of object that we need. Now there is some weirdness going on with this, which I'm going to show you now. So let's switch over to cycles because we'll be in that in a bit. And then let's press N to bring up our properties again. And then over in the shading bit, let's turn on back face culling. And you may be able to see that that doesn't look quite right. This screw modifier is very useful for using with curves, but for mesh objects, you might find you need to use calculate order. And then you can see that basically fixes it. So the bottom's okay. But the top is not very, uh, well, obviously we don't have the second side of faces there. So what we could do is we could either add a solidify modifier down here, but I'm actually going to just come back over to our right orthographic mode and then tab back into edit mode. Let's come into wireframe with the Z key and then I'm going to give it the thickness at the top. So maybe about that thick. And then I'm going to come down, start to come down and create the inside and then something to be about maybe about something like that. So a couple more clicks down to that. Now, um, what we can do is just press N and then come over to where exactly that is. And now I'm going to put this directly in the middle. So on the Y axis, I'm just going to set that to one, uh, zero, sorry. Wow, I've got bad arithmetic. So anyway, um, that's roughly into position. And then uh, we should be able to see that that's pretty much okay, but that looks a little bit strange really doesn't it so let's just fix that a little bit let's come back into here and let's flatten that off so i'm going to press g and then z to constrain it and then before i do that actually let's change our snapping mode to vertex and then press g z and then indicate to that vertex there while holding control to align it with it another thing that we could of course do is just select both of them and press s and then z and then zero and that would basically flatten them as well but assuming you had that vertex where you already wanted it you could just basically use that uh, vertex snapping to uh, align it up so let's take a look at that and that's not too bad I suppose now part of the issue that we're getting here now is with the normals basically we want to be able to look at this object even in this kind of solid shading mode and be able to feel like it gives it a nice satisfying clink sound or chimes when you hit it against another one and so let's go and fix that we can do that with a bevel modifier and ta-da! <laughs> no, not really. Um, let's just change some of these settings. Let's go over to the limit method angle and then set that to about 60 degrees. Now, basically what that means is if we come over to an edge here, uh, imagine one of these edges which is coming around the side, which is being screwed around. Uh, that sounds weird to say. Anyway, we've got this sort of edge with two faces on either side of that edge. If that angle, which is on either side of that edge, exceeds 60 degrees, then um, it's basically going to add a bevel to it. So it's just one segment, which is still making it look a little bit on the blobby side. So let's increase that to actually about four. And the other thing is we can now see quite a lot of stepping going all around this. And let's get that much looking much more circular. So let's add increase the step size there to maybe 32. And then let's do that for rendering as well. 
now it's not looking too bad. Now if we wanted to we could just leave it like this but if we want to add a little bit of extra detail into this uh, what we can do is tab into edit mode again select our vertices which I'm bringing up that mesh select mode by the way with control tab and then uh, with that vertex selected for, for instance we can go control shift B when working with vertices to basically chamfer them or bevel them depending on your preferred terminology and let's see let's do that there as well let's select that one control shift B and you can use the middle mouse wheel to uh, basically scroll through the amount that you want to place by the way if you look in the 3d view down here once you initiate many of the tools in blender you get kind of helpful hints uh, as to what that tool can do and the hotkeys and stuff like that so that's always worth checking out there is one more thing that I'd like to do which is take a look at the reference image there you can kind of see I've got this extrusion detail which sort of blocks and borders this sort of more ornamental pattern within that banding so I'm going to try and sort of emulate that a little bit so let's tab into edit mode let's go control shift B just to sham for that vertex and then I think maybe it's about there as well so let's just press G and then G again to just to slide that down a little bit more just so that the size is roughly the same and then I'm going to press control tab enter into the ed edge select mode select that edge press E to extrude it out and then S to scale that in a little bit now what that's happened what's happened there is, is it's actually extruded out a face as well which is basically just completely wrecking everything now and so what we want to do is delete the edge which is in the original location so press X and then delete the edge and now it should work again we're also going to do that for the other edge which is this one so let's press E to extrude that out we're going to scale that in a little bit and then delete the edge which was in its original position and let's take a look at that I think I wanted it to look a little bit tighter down there though so let's just do that come over to that vertex and kind of bring that just down a little bit more so maybe on that side as well in fact let's just drop that down until we see the bevel kind of kick in which is about there as you can see okay so that is basically our modeling done so I've gone ahead and added in an extra couple of things for example this plane which has just got a wood shader on it right now and that's just to ground the candle holder onto something also I've gone over to the world shader settings here in the node editor and you can see that instead of just the general background node that we get we've actually got an environment texture going on and plugged into the color socket of that now and that's called factory catwalk preview I've got that from hdrlabs.com there's some really cool free ones from here and it's this one in particular I'm using so check these out if you've not seen those before and also I've got these two nodes just to give us the generated coordinates and then to put that through a mapping node which is just allows us to rotate the world around on Z if we want so for example if I go shift Z now just to take a look at rendered mode we can sort of spin the world around there and get some different uh, angle on the reflections and stuff so that's the simple world setup that we've got going on there if we just select our candle holder and then also switch over to the object shaders you can see that this is a really really basic shader that you always get by default and then I'm going to turn this into a really super simple metal shader so this isn't going to be the perfect metal shader but I think you'll agree that it's going to look a whole lot more metallic than this so uh, I'm going to add in a glossy shader and a mix shader and just drop that in and then plug the glossy into the second socket and also it's mostly reflective so we're going to push that more into the using what's in the second socket which is our glossy shader and also for the diffuse color most of the light that hits the surface is just getting bounced off as reflection so it's not going to be a very bright diffuse color so we're just going to just drag that right down there and for the roughness of the how shiny the reflection is um, I suppose you could say how sharp the reflection is I'm going to turn that right down to 0 0.01 and you can see if we have a look at our reference image again um, that it is actually sort of far more sharper in the reflections than uh, 0 0.2 so we can keep it as that and that's our really super basic metal shader to create the next shader I'm going to use this as a jumping off point so I'm going to come over to the materials tab in the properties window click on the plus icon to create a new material slot then I'm, then from the pull down menu I'm going to select the metal shader and then to duplicate it I'm going to click on the number two and then what we need to do is to just simply rename this to metal.ornamental 
Now the problem is that we can't assign this ornamental shader to anything because it doesn't have any faces for which to select and we can't then assign that shader. It's just going to take whatever's in the first slot. So we need to duplicate this with Shift D and just move that off to the side. And the reason I do that is just to give ourselves the opportunity to come back if we need to at a later date. Or in other words, it's a safety copy. So anyway, we have this object here and now what we can do is come over to the modifiers tab and this is where all our faces are coming from. They're basically being, well, screwed for want of a better word. And then um, what we can do is apply that and then tab into edit mode. And then what we can do is grab this edge loop in the center here, alt right click on it. And then what we can do is go control tab to bring up our mesh select mode. And then I'm going to control left click on the face option there. And that's basically going to expand out to any faces that happen to be touching that edge loop, which is what we want. Now over in the materials tab, I'm going to make sure that's selected and then click on assign. Not a lot looks like it happens because these two are obviously just duplicates of one another at the moment. So if I come down to the settings and then just change the viewport color there to something slightly more golden, you can kind of see that's definitely assigned to the right faces there. The other thing that I'm going to do now that we have it in Blender is just bring over our property sidebar with the N key and then just enable ambient occlusion just to help it ground it in the scene whenever we're looking in this solid shading mode. So let's bring that back down with shift space and get to work on our ornamental shader. So I've changed out the layout around a little bit here. I've split this 3D view and loaded in this ornamental reference image into an image editor. And also I've created this plane, rotated it, and it's got the same sh ornamental shader as we have around the cylindrical part here. Just to show us what's happening on this um, shader just on a flat surface, just to help explain exactly what's going on. Also to serve us at this point when we're doing some shader work, it's a good idea to come to our add-ons and make sure we've got our node wrangler enabled. That means when we go uh, shift Z and we're taking a look in rendered mode, we can go shift A, add in the say a noise texture and then control shift click on it and we'll immediately see exactly what's happening with that particular node. We can also control shift click again and it'll toggle over to the factor output instead or at least whatever the extra nodes are on that side. So let's delete that because what we want to do is bring in a vector bump node. I think up here it's not really changing the shading as such, it's just more or less just changing the bump bumpiness. So let's plug in the normal out of that into the normal in of these two and then create a uh, texture which is going to drive this. And now what I found for these kinds of sort of organized sort of patterns, obviously a noise texture isn't going to quite cut it there because it's sort of regular in some way. I find that the best uh, texture node for that is the magic texture. So if we take a look at the factor out, because we don't really want it to be colored, um, just control shift click on that twice, you can see the kind of thing that we're getting. And that means we can actually increase the depth and we can change the scale and then we can also change the distortion and we're getting some cool stuff happening. It's always good to mix these sorts of things up with a color amp as well. So that means that we can now crunch in some details and may maybe make it sort of uh, a little bit more like that perhaps. You can start to see that it's seemingly much more coordinated now. So I'm going to create it like that say maybe. And now you can see, sort of see how that's affecting the uh, cylindrical part there. And what we can do is put that into the height and then let's take a look at our end mix shader there. And you can sort of see what's happening. Now that's maybe a little bit strong. I'm going to turn that, turn that to 0 0.5. And then um, so one other thing that we can do here actually is just go Shift A and then add in some um, texture coordinates for this. In fact, what we can do with the Node Wrangler is hit Control T and that will set these up for us automatically. But I'm going to click the object out of that instead uh, just to sort of create make a quick way of being able to do this as uniform for any object that has this shader assigned to it and then I'm going to also just change the scale slightly and tweak it to something that is maybe pretty good and then maybe let's change up uh, what's happening with this node a little bit so let's see what we've got maybe make it a bit softer like that and maybe increase the scale a bit more so maybe something like that. Uh, let's see how that's looking. Control shift click on that end shader there. 
and that's not looking too bad. It's not quite the same kind of thing as we've got up here. So what I'm going to do about that is just show another aspect of what we can do with this magic texture, and that's we can throw it through a converter node. So we can separate the RGB, plug it in, the, plug the color into that this time, and then control shift click on the red channel, control shift click on the green channel and the blue channel. And you can see sort of different things are happening with each. And you might sort of prefer what's happening with one over another. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to plug that into the height instead. Or at least I'm going to just lay that up so that this blue channel goes into here. And then that comes out and informs the height. And then let's take a look at how that's looking now. And then it's just a matter of playing with the distortion, playing with the scale and then playing with the color ramp and then potentially the different outputs as well until you get something that you uh, think looks pretty cool. So after a little experimentation, I'm happy with that and I've gone for a magic texture settings of a depth of three, a scale of four and a distortion of two. And I'm just using the red out and that's going through this color ramp, which is being increased in contrast there, sort of weighted on the black end. And then I've also gone for the bump node settings of 0.4 and 0.1 in the distance. And that's basically it. So as a bit of a bonus, I just thought I'd throw these shields into the mix here. And that's to illustrate the way that this magic texture is sort of spiraling around a little bit and the direction of it sort of being controlled. And it's being controlled by the UVs instead of the object coordinates. We're just taking the UVs out. So this is a completely different shader, uh, but it basically still uses the same principle of going into a magic texture and the rest of it. So let's just press Z twice to come into solid shading mode, tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to alt right click this edge here to get the face loop and now if we switch over to the image editor you can see that's what the UVs are looking like so if we uh, I'm gonna go to shift Z to take a look in rendered mode and now if I go uh, to press E to just unwrap those you can kind of see what happens to the way that the magic texture is laid out here if we then go to press U and then uh, go follow active quads, for example, you can kind of get some weird looking stuff on that, uh, which might be of interest. Uh, but otherwise we can just click U and then reset and then go U and then follow active quads and that should sort of flatten them all out. And then we can scale them in or press control P to pack them into position there and then S and then Y and then scale them up. And you can kind of see we're getting some interesting effects. And then also we can rotate these around as well and get some other interesting effects going on. And uh, so I'll just sort of leave you with that idea, really. The, uh, the possibilities are obviously quite numerous there. So uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye for now.